As part of my one month power platform series, um, I'm looking at Power Automate at the moment and I've spent a couple of days on this and I'm sure I'm going to spend a couple of more. And uh, today I want to try something different and I'm going to be looking at a leave request. Now I know that many companies have systems that does this. Okay, so don't think ah, I don't need a leave request. Take um, the lessons learned and apply to any other type of list approval that you might require. Now, um, what I've done to be able to achieve this is that I first created a list in SharePoint that I can point this flow to. So if you don't have access to create apps on SharePoint, you're gonna have to reach out to someone who does have full control or is a site admin some way. But I also want you to keep in mind that if you are a member of a Microsoft team, you actually have access to a SharePoint site behind it. So um, remember that um, your team, so let's just take a look, for example, um, finance, if you go to files and you go to um, open in SharePoint, you'll um, see that there's a SharePoint site behind it, which is where you can build apps and things as well. Please do keep in mind though, I don't want you to be building apps on your team's SharePoint site if you're going to open it up to other people in the company. So for example, the leave request, I wouldn't build it on the human resources site that's closed only to human resources. I would rather be building it on a separate site collection in SharePoint that's specifically used for apps um, in the company. So please keep that in mind. I would not build it on an environment that's closed off to a group of people. I would definitely go build it somewhere else um, where the permissions are micromanaged, if that makes sense. So um, if you've never built an app on SharePoint, I'll share some um, resources. If you go to my blog, and that's uh, tracyfinishcave.com, you'll see at the top there's uh, different tabs, and these are for some of the crazy challenges that I've done. So even in the Office 365 one, as well as Microsoft 365, if you go to that index for that year's blogs that I wrote, you'll see that there is a 21-part series that I did on um, creating a SharePoint intranet. And um, you'll find them here from day 206. And that takes you to the whole thing of building libraries, building lists. So that's a good um, example to follow as well. If you're new to SharePoint, it's a very good uh, example to build and to help you understand what it is that you want to achieve. So it's, it's rather easy to build a list in SharePoint, but there is a whole checklist for you. There's a 21 part video series of helping you set up lists, etc., in SharePoint. So that's on the Microsoft 365 day um, challenge. So you'll find it there, but you can also, of course, just search my blog. And that is from day, what did we say? 228 or something. Oh, well, there we go. Um, from 208. 206. So this whole section here takes you through um, SharePoint and building intranets, which pretty much uh, includes building apps. So I hope that that can help you a lot. But here is the list that I built. And what I did is I built um, an app. I built a custom list. So I just went add an app, built a custom list. And if I go to the list settings of this app that I built, I, um, I renamed the title column to reasons and I added the type of leave, which is a choice column, days available, first day of leave, last day of leave, to date and time, number of weekdays, who it must be approved by. This is not a fancy pants <laughs> process or solution that I'm building here, people. It really is just to take you through the basic steps. If you do have a system already, of course, um, you won't be building something like this, but uh, think of applying these lessons learned to another approval list that you'd like to use. So if I look at this leave request, um, what I've done at the moment is that if you click on new, you'll see that the user falls in um, specific fields. So um, there we go. Why is the reason? What do I want to do? Dates available, types of leave, etc. And I've also added the approved by. Now, um, Microsoft Power Automate can go and look up your manager, by the way, and I'll show you examples of templates that does do that. But sadly and greatly, I am the only person in my company. So I am the boss and the only worker. So I cannot test this and show you how it works if it looks up my um, line manager because I don't have one. I am the ruler of the kingdom. So um, for this example, I'm actually going to manually put in um, the person that must approve it. But um, there is flows 
and uh, in the templates for Power Automate that actually does that. So the first one that I did want to bring to your attention, and if you search for Request Manager Approval for a Selected File, so this is for a file, you'll see it looks at the file, it gets the file, and then it goes, and there's the two um, actions that you can use. It says get my profile, so it gets my details, and then it goes and gets my manager. And this, people, is if your AD is clean, so if your Active Directory is completed where the line managers show, then of course um, that's going to work great. If not, you'll have to manually put it in. I definitely would consider making sure that your Active Directory is clean because of course in Microsoft Teams there's this incredible thing called the WhoBot. Um, you'll see it's there and again it's not going to work for me because I am the supreme ruler so if I had to go here and say um, who is my manager, let's see what it tells me. That's right, people. I am the supreme ruler. I have no manager. But you can search for people and you can find org structures and things. And that's all based on the Active Directory. So it's such an incredible thing if it is up to date. So please uh, take note of that because then there's great templates that you can use because here it can automatically find my line manager and then send it for approval. Then another template that I think is so worthy, well, all of them are, of course, is a start approval when a new item is added. So this is very similar to what we'll build today. So it looks at a specific list and then says start an approval process. Um, it also has a condition in there that says if the approval is equal to, um, if the response is equal to approval, it then sends a mail. If not, it sends a mail, etc. But you'll see that it's also got built in that get my profile and get my manager type of thing to get the approver's email um, address, if that makes sense. Again, I'm not going to use that today, but that's two templates you can definitely look at. And if you build it from scratch, these are the different actions that you'll look for. So this get my profile, get my manager is the um, actions that you'll use. I am not going to be using that because I don't have a line manager and I don't know if that is a good thing or a bad thing. So we're going to build this from scratch and again, Leave request is just an example. This could be a request for an event. This could be a travel request. This could be a stationary purchase request. Not that I know if people still use stationary, but imagine this could be your onboarding solution. I mean, there's just so many incredible things that you can do. So I am going to go to create and I'm just going to um, select the automated flow, which means I can manually do this now. So I'm going to say TGS, which is my company, um, leave request. And I'm going to look for the trigger. Remember that each workflow starts with a trigger. So my trigger is going to be an item. Just to remind you of that, in SharePoint, to not get all fancy pants about this, you either have document libraries or you have lists. The one starts with a document, the one does not start with a document. So lists are very similar to an Excel spreadsheet, if I can simplify that. So this is a list. There's no documents involved here, which means that the template or the action that I'm looking for is not when a document is created, it's when an item is created. And you can actually see it right there. I could have just searched for SharePoint as well to filter it out, but there's my leave request. I want to start this when a new item is created, okay? and not modified or anything because then the workflow is going to keep on running if people approve things. I am going to set it to create it. So once I set that up, I can of course now go and say, okay, I want to choose where this uh, is built. Now I've built this on my modern intranet um, site <laughs> and um, let's go and find the site and then find the list name. If the site doesn't show there under your recent um, items, you can just select custom value and then copy the URL of the site. So now that it's got the site, I should be able to pick any lists or libraries on that site. So it's leave request that I want to pick. Now, what is my next step? So when a new item is added on this, what is the next thing that I want to achieve? So let's just minimize that. So firstly, I want to say that when this happens, I want to start an approval process. So next step, easiest thing is to search. So I'm going to search for approval and um, I want to use the start and wait for approval. So the approval type is just first to respond. So that's one person who responds. And then the title, I can now use dynamic content. So I can say, please approve, leave for, and I'm going to use the created by display name. So that would be the person who creates the item. Um, the email address, again, um, I can use dynamic content, so I could do that fancy thing that I go and look for the person, but there we go, is the approved by email. 
And it actually picks up the columns automatically in the SharePoint list that could have an email address associated with it, which is pretty cool. Then the details, you'll see here it says you can use Markdown. So that's to build a nice little uh, HTML looking email. I am going to be very lazy and just build it uh, very easily as a single line or string. So approve, leave for, again, I'm going to use the um, created by display name. Um, starting, and that would be first day of leave, ending, last day of leave. Uh, where were we? Um, type, <laughs> type of leave, total days. And reason. Okay, so there's my little email that I've concatenated. The item link, so that's the one they can click on if they want to see all the details, even though we can just add it to the email, of course. And that, um, so let's just go link to item. And then the item link description, um, I'm going to concatenate two fields to be the hyperlink description. And I'm going to again use the created by, or I can just say leave request. Um, created by display name and I can say um, just put a space there and I'm going to just put the type of leave for example so that would be the name that it uses in the email you'll see that as soon as we do that so now the next step would be is to set a condition because if it gets approved I wanted to send an email to the person saying it was approved if it gets declined same story so let's add a new step and it's going to be a condition control and it says, uh, what must I do? I'm going to say that when the outcome of the approval is equal to approve, what must I do? I want it to send me an email. So let's click on send email. Um, I actually want to look at this Office 365. So let's just see. So there we go. Send an email. I'm going to say, who must I send this to? Remember, I can use dynamic content. So I'm going to say the created by email in the subject, your leave has been approved. And I can say start packing cupcake. I can add other details here as well and say who was it approved by, etc, etc. Um, and then I want to repeat this on this side. So because I'm so lazy, I'm going to just copy this. And I'll go to the actions on this side, my clipboard, send email. So send email, then I'm going to say your leave has been declined. Um, and I'll change that to sorry cupcake. Sorry cupcake, it's been declined. So this is um approval email and this is always called notification she was and this would be declined notification okay so there i've got my emails um and let's save this and then try and see what the workflow does so I've added an item um, just to show you what it looks like. So there's the details that I've added and I've said who must approve it. And let's take a look at what the workflow is going to do. There you can see that it's running already. So um, it's done the first checks, the trigger has happened. So an item has been added and it seems like it's already sent Brahm an email to approve. So let's check that out. Now we can see an email has come to Brahm. He said, listen, please approve the leave for Tracy. She's tired, etc., etc." So Brahm has the option to approve or reject. So he's going to approve it um, because she is my boss and I'll get fired if I decline it. And you know it, sheep. So uh, let's submit. 
cool thing is, is that it changes the look and feel of the email once you've actually completed that task. So Brahm doesn't have the option of accidentally trying to do something twice. And then you can see here that it's finalized these steps, which means I should get an email to say that I can take leave, which is pretty cool. And there's my email. Start packing cupcake. You've made it. That's pretty cool. So um, very, very simple little workflow. I think what's so great about this as well is that you can even build out further on this type of requests. So if I had to go to this request, for example, you could add an action here that says post a message to teams that Tracy's leave's been approved so that your teammates know that you're going on leave as well, etc. So I think um, that's a pretty cool idea. And of course, lots of other cool things you can do as well. So I hope that that uh, gives you ideas for cool things that you can create. And uh, we'll chat soon.